Now that you finished the lab, you can make the graph. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be Halloween soon. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? I have like no idea what candy to buy though. I don't know what's popular or what's good. Have you ever done research on this? Well, I kept data from last year on what I handed out. You want me to show it to you? Yeah, I want to know what type of candy to buy. Yeah, pull out your computer. I'll show you my graphs. I posted them. Okay. Yeah, go to go to this website. Click on this right here. Okay. Good. Yeah, see this is the graph I put together of, of from last year's data. Oh, I could see. Then this shows what, what type of candy is popular. Yeah. yeah, if you look at this graph here, you can see that I, I've shown you all the different candies that I bought last year and how many of each of them I handed out. If you see, Reese Cups were by far the most popular candy. Everybody took those. I gave out almost 200 of them, if you follow the line across. Laffy Taffy, I didn't hand out too much of at all. So I shouldn't buy Laffy Taffy then? <laughs> no. That's a terrible candy anyways. Yeah, that's not worth it. I noticed that you actually have a really good title. I like how this title for the graph is very specific about what you're trying to show. Brand of candy bars chosen. So I clearly understand this graph. Mm -hmm. I also like how you have on the y-axis the dependent variable, which is the number of candy bars. And then on the x-axis, you have the independent variable, which is the brand of the candy bar. The brand of the candy bar influences the number of bars taken. When will I expect things like peak trick-or-treaters, like how much candy to buy and when are all the kids going to come to my house? Well, it's funny you should ask because I've got another graph if you flip. Okay. Yeah, see there, click there. Yeah, this will show you. I used a line graph to show you the data this time. Yeah, I can see a line graph is appropriate because on the x-axis, the independent variable is numerical data. Then you should use a line graph. Yeah, that way you can see different points on the graph. Like here, at 8 o'clock, you can see that's when everybody stopped coming. I had handed out about 550 pieces of candy by then. Now I notice that there's an orange line too. What does that mean that there's two different colors? Well, if you look at the key, the purple line shows candy I gave out to, to trick-or-treaters. The orange line shows you candy that I ate myself. Yeah. Wow, on that graph, you, you eat a lot of candy. I wonder how many calories that actually is. Yeah, um, I have data for that, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah the third graph. Check that out. I see. I used a line graph to show the calories of candy that I ate that night, too. I could see that you have the units in parentheses. That's really important to include, that the units of how you consumed candy is in calories. Right, and then the time is in central daylight savings time down at the bottom. You can see that I enjoyed the candy at first, but I had to quit about 7.30 because I started to get an upset stomach. Oh, well, thank you so much. I feel so well prepared for this Halloween with all this data that's being represented in different graphs. Oh, I'm glad I could help. Great. Let's review what we have learned from this presentation. One of the things we need to address is how does one know what type of graph to make? The first question you should ask yourself is, is the independent variable a category or a number? If you answer that it is a category, such as the brand of candy, that means that you need to make a bar graph. If you answer that the independent variable is a number, that means that you need to make a line graph. Numbers such as time would count. Also, whenever you make a graph, you need to make sure that you include all the following. First, always have a clear and specific title that explains what your graph is showing. Next, your dependent variable belongs on the y-axis. Third, your independent variable belongs on the x-axis. Fourth, if units are part of one of your variables, you need to write the units in parentheses next to 
the dependent or independent variable. Fifth, you need to somehow write a scale along the x or y axis. If it is a line graph, you are probably going to have to write numbers on both the x and y axis. If this is a bar graph, you would have probably numbers on the y axis, but then you'll have your categories on the x axis. Next, you need to plot your data. This could be data points or it could be bars. Last, if you have colors or shapes representing more than one thing on your graph, it is very important for you to include a key.